So, what is tensiomyography? Uh, we usually call it TMG for short, so it's a, it's a measuring device that actually quantifies the contractile properties of superficial skeletal muscles. Um, so it gives you actually information about two uh, properties of muscles. One is uh, speed of muscle contraction and the other one is muscle tonus. To be more specific, it gives you information about the amplitude of muscle contraction. But we'll go into details a little bit later. So, um, so far it is used in three different areas. So, um, now let's move to the, to the part to actually describe uh, what TMG is all about. So how does it work? What are we actually measuring? So this um, display here is very simplified. So you only have um, three components. Um, we'll start with the thing that we are actually measuring. So what you do is you position a subject that you want to measure on the massage bench in most cases. So that means that um, we are, like I said, we are measuring muscle function, but uh, we don't require a voluntary involvement of the subject. So we are not measuring what a certain subject is doing at a certain time. So we are not measuring subject when they're running, when they're jumping. Um, the other methods can cover that. What we are measuring is the quality of the muscle. So what's the potential of the muscle that we are measuring. So uh, in this display, um, we are measuring the biceps brachii muscle. Um, we are using, in order to have standardized, repeatable, objective conditions, we are measuring an external source um, that will evoke muscle contraction. In that case, we are using electrical stimulator and the goal is just to evoke one muscle twitch. So uh, for that purpose, the stimuli that is used is always the same. So we are using the stimulator to just send one millisecond long square impulse, monophasic square impulse. So the muscle will just one time it will contract and relax. And the whole cycle is very fast. Of course, it depends on the quality of the muscle, but the whole thing, usually it's over within 300, 400 milliseconds. With the displacement sensor, which is placed over the belly of the muscle that we are measuring, we are actually monitoring the formation of muscle belly in radial direction. And uh, as a result, we will get time displacement curve that I will show you in a minute. Um, the only thing that we actually change during the, the measurement protocol is the in intensity of stimulation. So what we want to get as the result, we want to get maximum contraction. And you never know, you know, it depends on the subject, it depends on type of skin, it depends on uh, how much fat is there between the skin and the muscle, uh, how much current uh, will have to be used to get to the maximum. So the measurement protocol usually is very short. We start low and we gradually increase um, the intensity until we get maximum response. In practice that means that it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds or even less to, to get from the first stimuli to the last. Usually it takes about five or six steps as you will see later on. Um, of course, we need some accessories to make the measurements easier and, uh, let's say, more objective. This is the whole setup. Uh, you can see it also here. So, uh, as I said, the subject has to be relaxed in um, either supine or prone position when you're measuring legs. If you're measuring upper body muscles, in some cases it has to be in upright position, but Let's focus on this. So we have a massage bed here. We have support pads which are used uh, uh, to support, in this case, um, uh, a lower limb. 
in order to um, create 30 degrees flexion in the knee when measuring quadriceps muscles. So the support pads are used again to ensure that the, uh, the conditions in which you are doing the measurements are always the same so you can repeat the, uh, the measurements in the same conditions so also you can then compare the results not only between one and second measurements but also between the other subjects that were measured in the same with the same criteria. For the sensor to be held in the right position, we use the camera tripod with a mechanical arm which positions and holds the sensor over the muscle during the contraction. Uh, and that's it. So you obviously don't need this medical card, but uh, um, the whole system is portable. Um, it is frequently used, it's not meant only for laboratory use, it is frequently used in the pitch, on the track, it's also battery operated, so um, the stimulator can probably hold for more than 50 hours, so the limiting factor in this case would be how long the, the battery in the laptop will, will hold. So um, this is how the whole setup looks like, and as I said, you can also see it here. Um, this is just the display on, you know, how this sensor tip is positioned over the muscle and what happens when the muscle contracts. So, so when the muscle contracts, it will push the sensor tip in and again when the muscle relaxes, it will come back to this. And what you get as the result, it's a time displacement curve, which you can see here at the end. This time displacement curve um, is divided into five different parameters. So this is, this is muscle twitch. If you look in literature, um, in most cases what you will get, you will have time to peak and then you will have time to relax. And, but the amplitude usually, usually is not, it's not measured and it's not determined. So I will quickly describe all five parameters, but uh, I can tell you, of course, there are some researchers, they will disagree a little bit, but the fact is two of the parameters in all the publications and research so far prove to be more important than the other three. TC, contraction time, the next parameter is the most important parameter monitored by the TMG. Um, it tells you how long does the muscle need to get from completely relaxed to a completely or maximally contracted um, position. And this is the parameter that I was already uh, mentioning. So this parameter has more than 90% uh, uh, correlation with muscle composition. So the, the more fast twitch fibers you have in the muscle that you're measuring, the shorter this contraction time will be and vice versa. Um, it also has uh, quite high correlation with some of performance tests, um, but the biggest value of uh, contraction time probably is its sensitivity because uh, contraction time will show you if the function of the muscle changed. It can change for a number of reasons, so you can do something to, um, to activate the muscle so you can detect potentiation. Uh, if you do something that will uh, generate fatigue, you can also detect fatigue, um, but the biggest change in contraction time will be immediately after an injury. So uh, after an injury, you have inhibition, which prevents um, part of the muscle fibers to contract, and you will see a big, big shift to the right. So this contraction time will prolong drastically. So probably this is uh, one of the reasons why the contraction time is uh, the parameter that we'll monitor closely. The range of times that you will get is quite big. So some muscles, of course, overall, some muscles are because of its function and the structure are more explosive or faster than the others. But um, if you compare, you know, professional athletes from different sports, even if they are, you know, dynamic, explosive sports, you can see a, quite a big range of values that you can get. So. I will try to uh, at least uh, give you an idea of what you can expect later on. But in most cases, these contraction times can range somewhere from 15 milliseconds for extremely explosive muscles up to 
60 or even 70 for either very slow muscles, so predominantly uh, slow twitch muscle fibers, or the muscle which is injured and it cannot activate fast twitch muscle fibers.